I will never forget that day. It was when our class 10 final exam results were announced. A crucial time that could decide our chances of getting into the best schools for classes 11 and 12. I had always been the top math student in my class, scoring 99 or 100 on every test. So, I walked into the exam center feeling confident, ready to tackle any question. But as I left, a nagging doubt crept in. Math was my strong suit, yet suddenly I felt uncertain and anxious. I knew I hadn't done well and I was scared to see how many marks I would end up with. Many days later, when the results came out, my heart sank further. I looked at my scorecard and saw that I had only received 88 marks. Though it's a score many would celebrate, for me, it was a bewildering shock. I couldn't fathom how this had happened. Math was my strength, yet somehow all my preparation seemed to fail when it mattered the most. What happened to me could happen to anyone. Imagine failing at what you are best at during a crucial moment, be it an important exam, a dream job interview or another pivotal event. Is there a way to prevent this? I believe there is. And this is exactly what I will be sharing in this video. I'll explain what went wrong in my preparation and more importantly, I'll show you how to avoid similar pitfalls using the technique of free recall. But we won't just skim the surface, we'll explore it the right way. Specifically, I'll demonstrate both the correct and incorrect methods of practicing free recall through a practical example. Once we are done, you will have understood why free recall is one of the most powerful and basic study strategies there is, while at the same time, why practicing free recall incorrectly can actually hinder your learning progress. So let's get started. I will divide this video into three parts. First, I'll set the context. Secondly, we will move to the demonstration because it is the easiest way to understand this technique. Now you can use this technique to learn anything, be it preparing for coding interviews or deeply learning economic concepts. In this video, I will use learning German as an example. I've chosen this topic as this should be easy to relate to and once you have understood the principles, you can apply it to learn anything you want to master. And finally, I will address some questions you may have in your mind. So, to set the context, when we first learn something, we should ideally try to deeply understand the topic at hand. Now, let's say we have spent 30 minutes or so learning German. So, once you have spent time learning the material that explains this topic, ideally you should step away for some time and then come back to the material and not open the material but rather just take a blank page and try to retrieve from your mind what all you can remember in a structured manner that makes sense. This is free recall in a nutshell. We will see how this benefits you and what the right and wrong way of doing this is in the next section through a demonstration. And as I've mentioned, for the demonstration, I will take you through the process of learning step-by-step -step German, okay? And you can apply these steps to whatever you are trying to learn. Step one, spend time learning the topic deeply. So I'm gonna spend time for the next 30 minutes studying German. I'll go through each word noting its pronunciation, meaning, and an example sentence. This will help me understand not just what the words mean, but how they are used in different contexts. Step two, step away from the material. As part of step two, I'm going to step away from what I've been learning. I'll be going for a short walk, and once I'm back, I also have a few quick emails that I need to respond to. Step three, Time for free recall. So now I'm back at my table and in this step, I try to recollect what I learned, okay? So again, we are doing it in the first way, which is not the appropriate way, but then let's just demonstrate it. So I'm trying to remember the words that I learned. So I learned Freund, okay? I learned Buch, which was book. And Freund is friend. 
I learned the word Stadt. Okay, I remember that. That's city. And I learned the word Lehrer, which is teacher. And I did learn the word Glücklich, which is uh, lucky. And I learned the word house, which is again house in English as well. And I learned the word Wasser, which is water. And I also learned the word Essen, which is food, I guess. Okay. So again, these are the words that I'm able to remember at this point, And then I just go ahead and get back to my material. Now, this is the wrong way of doing free recall. Now, what is wrong over here? The thing that is wrong over here is not that I tried to recall things out of my memory, but the problem is that I have stopped with this and I just moved on with my studies. So when you just practice active recall in this manner, you're not forming deep connections. Notice I've tried to remember the words and their meanings. Now, what did I do wrong here? The problem with the way that I practiced free recall was that it was superficial. Let's take a look at how I should have actually tried to practice free recall. Okay, so what should I be doing? The right way of doing free recall is that I don't stop at this point, but rather I spend time grappling with the material and I try to do various things. But ultimately, I'm just trying to grapple with the material. Okay, so what are the things that I could do? So I have a word over here, which is Freund. And yes, I have tried to recollect the meaning of the word and the pronunciation of the word, which is something that you have to learn when you're learning a new language. But along with this, probably I could also try to recollect other words that I have learned which are related. Like maybe previously I learned the word Frau, which means woman or Mann, which means man. Okay, So I could form clusters of knowledge. So this is one way of grappling with the material, which is identifying related concepts or in this case related words. I could also try to form sentences using words that I have learned. Okay, And again, when I did learn the words initially, I did try to form a few sentences. But again, when I am trying to recollect it, it's all about grappling with the material and trying to apply it deeply. So again, I have the word Freund over here. So I could try to apply it to a different context. So I had talked about my best friend or uh, discussed that concept when I was learning this, but probably I could relate two words like I have wasser over here, which is water. Now, what if I want to tell that my friend wants water? So probably I can make a sentence out of it, which is mein Freund möchte Wasser. OK, so again, this this word is something that probably I've learned previously. But again, the concept over here is not about learning German, but learning the right way, which is by trying to apply it. So we have seen one way of grappling with the material, which is trying to identify related concepts or applying it in a different context using sentences. Or you could also think of a scenario where, let's say you're studying abroad and maybe that's why you're learning German. And again, you want to talk to your teacher. OK, so you have the word later. Now, imagine a context where probably you have to call that person or you have to describe or you have to tell something about your teacher to somebody else. So try to imagine a context where you can apply what you learned. So these are all different ways in which you can compare and contrast material. You can synthesize material. You can organize it in your mind using different contexts where you would be using it. And you're just grappling with the material and facing some extra difficulty, which is desirable in nature. So this is the right way in which you can practice active recall, which is all about grappling with the material. So don't just stop by recollecting the information, but rather transform the information into something that you would be using. And again, remember, in the first place itself, you would be learning the information because ultimately you want to apply and use it somewhere. Step four, review the material. Now that we are done with free recall, we revisit the material we had and try to fill out gaps in our understanding. If there are interesting questions that came up when you were comparing and contrasting what we learned 
with other things that we knew, we go ahead and try to find answers to these questions. For that, maybe you can use ChatGPT or browse on the internet or refer the material that you have. Step five, step away from the material again. Now, we again step away from the material. This time, we step away for a longer period, like let's say two hours. We do something totally different. I just remembered that I need to go shopping and this is a good time to do that. Step six, free recall round two. So we are again back at our table and this is a session to do again active recall or free recall. So we start with trying to remember the words that I learned. So I learned the word Freund, I remember that, which is friend. And I learned the word Wasser, which is water. I learned the word glücklich, which is lucky. And it goes on in this manner, okay? And again, the point is we don't stop over here. So the first step is, of course, trying to recollect the facts, but then we try to reorganize it. The idea is just pretty simple. Try to grapple with the material. And of course, it's going to depend on what your current level of knowledge is, because you're trying to connect new knowledge with existing knowledge, you're trying to synthesize it, you're trying to make sense of how everything fits into the big picture. Now, what are some of the ways that I could grapple with this material? So I have a word glücklich over here. Probably, again, it means lucky. So I could try to make variations of it, like sehr glücklich, okay? Sehr means very. Again, as I said, it's dependent on what you've learned previously. And you could also make a word nicht glücklich. Nicht means no, okay? And not lucky, okay? So again, that's another way I could grapple with this material. And I could also see that when I go back in the next step and when I try to check whether what I've formed over here is right or wrong, that's again, that's something that I should do. I should verify whether this is actually right or not. But at this point, I'm just trying to grapple with the material and I'm just trying to work with it, okay? And again, what are the other ways in which I could work with this material? I could compare it with English. So again, another word that I had learned was auto, right? Which means car. So I could make a sentence of, with this word, which is, I could make um, das auto, the auto, the car, okay? Ist neu. So I could say that this car is new. So I've made a sentence with it. And when I compare this sentence with the English language of saying that the car is new, I see that the structure is in fact maintained. Now, I could also say, das Auto kann neu sein. So I could say, das Auto kann neu sein. Again, I'm just trying to make another sentence with what I've learned. So when I translate this to English, this is actually saying that the car can be new, okay? Now, when I form this sentence, I see that the structure is a little bit different, right? So over here, I have neu over here, which is for new. But then I see that new in this case in English is placed at the end of the sentence. Now, if you go deeper into the grammar part, this is an adjective. So again, it's just a demonstration. So these are ways in which you can compare this and see how the scenario varies between German and English. So again, at this point, I'm just comparing and contrasting what I've learned with existing knowledge. Step seven, revisit the material. We again revisit the material and try to find answers to questions that came up and strengthen gaps in what we learned. We also check whether what we've remembered is actually correct. And this cycle repeats with longer gaps between learning sessions. And every time you try to integrate what you already know with what you're trying to get good at. Now let's try to use this information to really understand what went wrong with my math preparation during class 10 which resulted in the traumatic experience of only scoring 88 marks in a subject which was absolutely my strength. My main way of studying math was by practicing a lot of problems. That's it. So as long as I was dealing with familiar problems, I would do well. But I couldn't solve a few problems that had high marks which needed creative problem solving under exam pressure and time constraints not using free recall practices that involve synthesizing and reorganizing information limited my ability to adapt 
to new or unusual problems. Also, not practicing comparing and contrasting, which is a core part of free recall, hindered me from developing flexibility in thinking, which would have helped me to innovate new solutions. Thus, even though I thought I was well prepared for the exam, I was in reality not ready to tackle problems in unfamiliar concepts, lacking speed of innovation and flexibility. If you use free recall the right way in your studies, it can do wonders for you and help you develop deep understanding and make you hands-on with the material you are trying to master. Let's now talk about the final thing which I would like to discuss about this method. After you have learned something, if you find that you are not able to remember anything when you try to do free recall, it's probably because you have waited for too long a period before doing free recall. Okay, so try a shorter interval next time. If you remember on the other hand everything, then probably it's too fast. You need to do free recall when you are just about to forget stuff and between sessions you can increase the interval. As you apply this method, you will get better at this. But at the end of the day, the North Star or guiding principle that when you are doing free recall, you are not just trying to remember stuff, but you are trying to use it as you would in real life. This could be thinking about the application of what you've learned or using it to form a better picture of how the world works. If it's learning a language, it may be about thinking how you could use what you learned in a real conversation. Or if it's learning a hard skill, think about how you could use what you learned in different contexts. Compare and contrast it with things you already know. Remember, it's not about being perfect and being able to come up with all the answers, but rather it's about grappling with the content and experiencing that desirable difficulty when you're trying to recall stuff as well as when you're trying to learn it for the first time. As important as free recall, using the right strategies in deeply understanding the material in the first place is also very important. Check out this video where I discuss strategies that you can incorporate into your studies for this so that you deeply understand stuff and you experience that desirable difficulty not only when you try to recall stuff but also when you first learn it.